Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and we are on air. Uh, Jolene's got me set up today like I'm doing a presentation, which is cool. Uh, better lighting out here, I guess. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to prime the trunk lid and the hood on the outside of the trunk lid and the underneath of the hood. I'm just going to go over how I do it, and I, all I can tell you is how I do it. And remember, you take what you like and you throw away the rest. If you do not like something, do not take it, but if you like it, go for it. Um, what I use is Feather Fill Primer. Uh, it's a polyester primer, and the, this is the reason why I use it. When I put it on the car, I can get lots of, lots of build. I get, it will go on very thick. Um, you can get lots of build with it. It's almost like a, I guess a, I've heard tell of spray putty or something like that. But you can actually probably build this stuff up to probably an eighth. You probably could if you wanted to, if you kept wanting to spray it on there. You probably could build it at least um, a sixteenth easy or an eighth you could build that stuff up to. And when you're filling out a car and blocking a car and doing body work to a car and you're welding on a car, generally you want that primer to help you make the car as straight as possible. That's what it's for. It's called prime, primer, filler, whatever. It's a, it's a filler applicant. It's thick and it helps you make the car straighter than it could be. And I like it because it's thick. The second reason I like it is because I can put filler over top of it. We did that here a video a couple days ago. You can put filler over top of it and the filler feathers off probably better than it does if it's on bare metal. It really does. It feathers off better than, um, than bare metal. So it's got two things I like. It's got build in it. So if I'm blocking somewhere I did some body work. This has the build in it to help me feather that filler off where it meets the metal. Basically, that's generally where the places where it messes up, where the filler meets the metal, um, is where you'll see something generally. Uh, if it's not straight, it helps straightens it out because it has a, a thickness to it. And if there's something wrong, I can fill over top of it. The reason I, that's the reason I use it. Um, and the third reason is, if I prime that and put some good coats of primer on, on the metal, if I shove it outdoors for a while, it does not take off on me. It does, what I mean by that, it does not rust on me. So I'm very happy. Also, I use it because I do not feel like I have to use epoxy or, or etch primer or any of that stuff. And the reason being is, is I make sure that all the metal is sanded before I apply it. If you're going to apply something over metal that is not sanded, you're looking for an issue. You're looking for your nails to come off. Um, if you do not sand the nail before you put the nail on, you're looking for it to come off early and it does not work that good. It's the exact same thing with primer, exact same thing with paint, exact same thing with everything. Um, the other primer, I do not use the lacquer primer. I'm just This is what I do. I'm just telling you. I do not use the lacquer primer because um, it does not, it shrinks really, it shrinks really bad. This is less shrinkage, so there's another reason why I use it, less shrinkage. Uh, the lacquer uh, primer, it shrinks quite heavily. When you put that on there, you cannot put body fill over top of that lacquer primer. It does not adhere, it comes off. Um, and that's basically it. It doesn't have anything in it that benefits me when I'm doing a car, the lacquer primer does not have anything in it. So I use this stuff because everything it has, it benefits me. Um, the lacquer primer doesn't have anything that I'm using that would benefit me. So that's why I use it. It's feather fill. It would cost you uh, 200, like time you, time you get it, uh, $250 if you buy it at your local Napa store. No, like a local Napa know-how store, your Napa store, it costs you $250 Canadian plus your tax. Uh, and it's a very easy thing to, to mix. It's one quart to one of these hardeners. So there's four hardeners in there. I'm going to mix a quart of it up and I'm going to spray it on the hood and the trunk lid. If we're going to take a look, we're going to see this bad boy. This is the underneath of the hood. 
Um, all of the paint has been stripped off so we know that it's roughed up and ready for some primer. On the insides here where it's got a little bit of rusty going on, we did not do that because that's the outside of the hood. Uh, we'll probably end up rock guarding that part. Uh, the outside of the trunk lid, you can see all the scratches on it. Uh, that means that the, the primer is going to adhere to the top of the trunk lid, and uh, that's where it's at. The trunk lid has been finished off with an 80 grit, 40, 80, and I prime. There's no 180, 120, no 220, no nothing. Um, that primer there has the filler, filler uh, properties to be able to take um, what I've got here for um, sanding it off. So I could sand, if, if I wanted to, I could prime this, I'll say three coats. I could prime this three coats. I let it set for a day or two. Um, I come back in, I could sand this with 220, guide coat it 400 and paint it. It has that good of uh, filler it feels that good. If there's any really major scratches in it, like the 40 grit scratches, it will take some of those, but you have to be careful. Um, you have to be careful. On these full over jobs, or like the complete job, like we're doing on this Thunderbird, um, I would not just prime it once, no doubt in my mind. It, the reason being is, we want to get it all as straight as possible. Everything's been worked. The quarter panels have been worked. The roof has been worked. The catwalk has been worked. The hood's been worked. Uh, the doors have been worked. Everything's been worked. So when, like I don't know if you've ever heard it before, um, the second prime, we're doing the second prime and blocking. So that means they've primed, primed it once, like say put three or four coats on it. They've bring it out. They've blocked it, trying to make it straight as possible. And then they take it back in and they prime it again. So sometimes you don't get to see that. Not all cars, not all real nice cars are just primed once and painted. That doesn't generally happen. You generally they're primed a couple times and then they're blocked out and painted. On this primer here that I'm using right now, I am, I am going to block this car out where the bodywork I did and some of the other bodywork that they have done. I'm going to block this car with an 80 grit on that primer. I know it seems really, really coarse, but in all honesty, uh, the sharper the paper, the straighter the product you'll get. I know that I'm not painting it, uh, blocked it with the 80, but the 80 grit is really cutting it down nice, straightening it out nice. It's also cutting off any filler that I put in the pinholes nice, and it's getting me down to where I think that the panel is going to be perfectly ready for another prime of this putty or this uh, primer. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up. I shook this really well first. You want to shake your primer uh, really well before you apply it or start to mix it or spray it in your gun. Um, if you do not, you are looking for trouble because it'll gather on the bottom of your can and you will have a, a poor mix that will not do the job that it's supposed to. Uh, I, so I've already shook it. It's been shaken for quite a long time. I am going to dump myself in a quart of primer. And uh, you can measure it if you want to. And I just kind of look at it. I, I use a lot of eyes. I, I do it by the eye quite a bit. And uh, I just do it by the eye quite a bit. And it does not bother me. I have the mixing cup here. I do not know if... Now I should, it should say, but if you want to mix it right on, it'll tell you if you're right on or not. But I'm good there. I got a little primer going down around here on that. I like to take a screwdriver and just punch a hole around the edges so the primer goes back down in the can. We'll do that. It's Sunday fun day and Jolene's looking amazing. Jolene's looking amazing, as always. going to keep it simple today just going to keep it simple keep it simple they said Simon I'm going to put that on the floor I'm just going to open that up you can see the primer soaking back down in there or running back down in take what you like throw away the rest
I hope yesterday when I was talking about doing something fast as you can, um, didn't hit you wrong. All I was trying to do is motivate you to become the best you can become. That's all it was for, is to, you know, try to, you know, try to make yourself the best you can. Why not? And uh, it, re it creates self-worth. It creates self-worth. Sometimes that self-worth is hard to to gather up. Sometimes self-worth, it is. And the more you have, or I say the more you have, uh, if you have a little bit, um, it's nice. You, you, you respect yourself if you have a little. Sometimes I lose my self-worth, sometimes, and uh, it's hard to gather it back, but sometimes if you do something, just give yourself a pat on the back. No matter if someone doesn't give you a pat on the back, pat yourself on the back. You're the one that can make yourself feel good or bad. So it's one of those to a quart of primer. And I generally just dump it in and, and forth it up. I can forth it up by my eye. There's four quarts in that. There's a gallon, so four in that. So I just take, you know, by eye. And I know, I know, I know, this is the reason I know that it's okay for me to do that because they say to mix one of these to every quart. And these are not exactly, oh, that one is. <laughs> these are generally not exactly the same. So they're not bad, eh? Right on the money. These are full now. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they are. Stir this up well. Now, this primer goes hard, so you have to clean your gun. Uh, you cannot leave it like your th lacquer thinner primer. Some you can leave it in your gun for a while and then come back and you can stir it and then you can get it rocking and rolling again and, and spray some. This stuff here has got a hardener in it, so you cannot leave it in your gun. Once you spray it, then you have to clean the gun. That's what you have to do. I'm going to go turn the fan on. Epoxy, the word, is used a lot. Everybody likes to epoxy their, their metal. I, I like to skip that because the primer is 250. Your, your, probably your, your epoxy is another 250. And I like to leave that out of the equation. And the reason being is I'm getting the same results without it. <laughs> so I generally do not put it in there because I'm getting the same result without it. It does not do anything else for me than other than take my money. That's all it does for me. But if you feel like you have to, that's what you got to do. You do what makes you happy. Aiden did a little spraying with the, the gun yesterday and uh, he did the trailer paint the trailer for me. Uh, he painted black with uh, direct metal black paint and uh, he did an excellent job and I know that because the time he took he went over every little piece. But when he was spraying it uh, I noticed when I went out that he wasn't uh, it wasn't shooting much paint much paint out for him and the, the two places that I go to first if the paint is not coming out of the gun is the nozzle comes off and you look inside the hole where where uh, where the thinner comes out. If that hole there has got any paint around it at all, you're 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 not going to get any paint coming out of the gun. So number one, I check the nozzle. I take that off, check that, clean that, make sure there's nothing in there. Number two is I check this top hole. There's a breather hole right here. Um, if this breather hole is plugged up, that's another reason why your paint or your primer will not come through your gun. So if you're spraying along and you feel like you've got no pressure or you've got no paint coming out, number one, number two, and, and number three, you can go to that filter that's on the inside underneath this bad boy. When you take this cover off, there's a filter down inside there. You can take that off and check that out. But generally, that's the problem if you want to check.
that right there is a nice fan. If you look at that, if you turn the gun, like turn this back on this right here, there's a little piece right here. That'll turn that down. You get a small pattern. You can see how small the pattern is? So if you're spraying in places that you don't need a big pattern, you're just spraying a little place, turn your pattern down, hit it like that. If you're spraying panels, you want a nice, you want a nice pattern like that. If it's empty in the center, see how it's got more coming out here, more coming out there? If it's empty in the center, you turn it back a little bit and make that pattern feel better. Uh, feel better. And how do you feel? Generally, I feel with my hands. Now, I'm going to take a rag and clean the little bit of black paint out of that. So this gun I have used to paint, and now I'm using it to prime. Uh, and I, I'm using it right up. It's a, a $15 gun. And the reason it's $15 because Jolene bought them when they were on sale. And that's what it is. I'm using it up. Uh, the money that I'm saving from buying a high dollar gun and then I can just spray and chuck so I will use this gun right to the end and then um, I will chuck it and I will use it for priming and priming and right to the end till I ruin it till it's completely messed up I uh, do not care if I filter the gun or filter this stuff and the reason being is um, I'm sanding it off if I was priming um, before paint, I probably would filter it. Probably would filter it if I was doing that. Alrighty, I'm ready to rock and roll, I think. Let's go ahead and put some primer on that stuff. I'm going to put, I'll probably put three coats on each. Um, that way there, I have enough product on there, enough product on that stuff to block things out and make things look the best they can. If I just put a little bit on, what's the sense, you know, I can prime I guess and then just paint it, but I'm, I'm using this product to help me straighten everything. So I have, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, whatever. I have all these places. Every place around the filler has, has the chance to be an issue, basically. This primer, when I'm spraying it on, is helping me feather the filler to the metal, to the ocean floor. Ocean floor, this is the flood that I put on to bring it to the level of the ocean floor. Alrighty, uh, before I prime, I just want to let you know, stay with us to the end. We have exciting news. That's what Jolene told me. Anyway, we've got exciting news. I am going to put primer on all the filler places first just for a little extra and then I'll primer. Weird. I don't know what that was. I guess it's like that old saying, the, squeak wheel, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So all the fixed areas get more primer.
Now, I don't know if you ever, ever heard tell of your body panels growing. The reason they grow is because the primer that goes on the edge of the panel is growing. So every time you strip a panel or do a panel, make sure you take all the paint off the edges. And the reason being is it just keeps growing and growing and growing because of the primer, uh, the paint, and all that sort of stuff. Body fill first. And when you're priming, just basically keep on the move at full time. If I stop somewhere and pull the trigger, it's not going to look good. Cool. Primer slowing down on me a little bit. Might have a little bit up in that hole. I just put my finger on the end. Give a little shot, pushes the air back up through, cleans it out a little bit. Gets me rocking and rolling again. This primer's thick. That's what we want. We might have to mix prime more primer up. I'm not sure. Might have to mix prime more primer up. This gun is a 1-4 nozzle. I think I've seen a spot in there. I am going to grab a filter. It might be holding my paint back.
I used a used plastic container and the, the paint on the inside of that may, may have come off. It's okay. Just stirring like that so it feeds it through. Not worrying about in here. The reason being is um, I'm going to put rock guard in there. I know you see a little bit of rusty going on. I'm going to rock guard in there. That had that like that tire stuff on it, so it does not. I'm not going to waste the product in there to cover it up with rock guard. I'm not going to do it. Trying to load the product up on it so I have something to block out. Now, on the bottom of this hood, I'm going to load it up. It had like a lot of pitties going over here. Didn't want to fill that all out, but I'll load it up with the primer. That way there I can try to sand it out. Hmm. Not sure if I want to mix more up or not. I can still, it probably, it's only got two coats. I load it to the prime or the, the body fill places up front.
I guess that becomes whether I want to mix more product and put it on there. Uh, I can mix up half of one, put half a hardener in it. I can do that. Let's do it. Nope. It's not what to do. See my stuff I caught? We'll put on a little bit more. Do half of one. How do I know it's a half of one? I got a good eye. We'll use half of this. Cut it off too far. Damn it. That's all right. I'll put tape on it. So basically, I, I'm actually mixing this stuff probably just like I'd mix body fill. Yeah, you know, if you know what I'm, body fill, you do not get the same amount of hardener in it every time. No, you do not. And the reason being is you just kind of eye it up and you do, do that thing. Well, basically, I'm doing the exact same thing with primer. Not saying for you to do it. Not saying for anybody to do it. You can measure it up if you want to. But I generally just do it this way. I haven't had an issue yet. Get harder in it. It hardens. I let it set. And the reason I know that um, it's okay is because some of them things that I get are sometimes three quarters full, sometimes they're half full, sometimes they're over full. So I just kind of do my thing. I'm going to get a Filter, watch yourself, sweetheart. It's like whether I grab a tape measure or not. <laughs> Generally, I don't. If it looks good, I'll go with it. Come take a look. It's not a bad pour for a gas. One cup is what I wanted. Not bad, eh, Jolene? Huh? Not bad. I don't suggest everybody does it, but I've been doing it enough that I feel like it's okay. If you remember right, we had two cups on the first one, and we only had one on this one, and I only wanted half of one, so. 
that's basically what I got. That is what I got. Spray it again. Going to put lay a lot more primer on the trunk lid on the outside because I feel like that is the area that you're going to see. The underneath of the hood is, you're going to see that too when you open the hood, but it's not going to be something that you're going to be looking down at every day or looking at. So I'll probably give a little bit on the front where the filler is and some where the, where the pitties were, but basically a lot of the primer I'm going to try to lay it on the trunk lid because that's the outside and that needs the attention. Makes sense to me. There we go. The stuff's thick. Rule of thumb, you want to lay it over halfway each time. So if I lay a six inch pattern on, then I want to pull it over three inches. Half over top of what I did already sprayed, half a new one. Then I pull it over three inches. I'm overlapping it every time. I've got some places underneath the, the scoop that's much desired for, but what I mean by that, it needs a little bit of work in there. We'll have to sand that out, obviously.
I would say that's good. Good for first prime. And for first prime, um, I'm going to use all that material to try to get um, where I'm going, and that is for a painted surface. But that is a good first prime. I've got lots of product on there. I didn't waste any product. Uh, and I have, I, I've built it up a little bit, so it's going to be uh, good to sand. So, now it's just clean up. I'm going to run the primer, or the not primer, some thinner through this gun. I'll run it through twice. I'm not going to spend a whole long time doing it. I'm going to dump some thinner in it, but halfway. I'm going to squish it around, put a rag on the end of it, put it on the end of it, push the thinner back up through the gun. Then I'll spray it some more, and then I'll put a rag on it, push the up through the gun again. I'll spray it out till it's gone. Then I'll do it one more time, fill it up halfway, put my rag on the end of it, spray it, bring it up through again, then spray it all through. Use my rag that I've got the thinner on. I'll wash the gun off. I'm done. I'm not, I'm not tearing it all apart and doing that sort of stuff because that's how I use the guns. I use, use them as throwaways. Uh, as far as this thing goes here, I do not clean that either. I'll pull the stick out, leave that on there. I'll throw this in the garbage. And just like last time, this will harden inside here. I'll give it a couple bats with my hand. The whole thing will fall out. And what I mean by that is you can look on the floor and you can see where the flakes of primer come out of the container. And there's some there, there's some there, so I just leave it in the container. It comes out because it'll harden. I'll grab myself that thing there. I can wipe that off a little bit, whatever. Grab myself a rag. We'll fill this halfway full of thinner. And I'll spray it out. I'm probably going to take it out, just spray it in the air. No doubt in my mind to clean the gun. Don't like spraying it on the fan right at the present moment because the fan just clucks it on the on the blades and it uh, builds up and then it ruins the fan. That's what I did last time. Uh, special announcement is we're going to we've been invited to the Syracuse Nationals, July 14th and 15th. Never been there. Can't wait to see the cars. Syracuse Nationals, July 14th and 15th. We've been invited, me and Jolene, uh, we have. And like I said, I'm excited to see the cars. I think there's probably seven, maybe seven to 10,000 cars there, I can say. Also, I want to show you, I have a friend, a mechanic friend, his name's Nathan. And he's, I find him very smart and intelligent on this sort of stuff, putting stuff together. Uh, we've got the motor and transmission put together married together and completed so uh, everything's been done clutch pressure plate uh, the the inspection pan on the front uh, the pilot baron the release baron is going to be a hydraulic one but everything's married together and everything's ready to rock and roll the engine like i said we've seen that before uh, it started and everything so i'm really happy with that funny story uh, me and uh, nathan was putting that together the other day and I wanted the engine to level out well I got the old ratchet on here and I was just a ratchet and I put my hand on there just a ratchet and, and my finger skin got on them threads and went underneath of that <laughs> and um, I could not get my hand out because my finger was in the threads and uh, first thing out of my mouth was ah uh, anyways, um, I tried to turn it the other way to get it out. Couldn't get it out. Couldn't get it out. And uh, it was eating my hand up. And uh, Nathan was smart enough. He went over and grabbed a hammer and he whacked this end of it. He said, when I whack the end of that, you pull your finger out. He'd give her a whack and out come my finger. And basically, that's all I've got going on there. Um, it doesn't look like much. But I can tell you one thing. If I'd have pulled her out and he wouldn't have done the right thing to get me out, I would have been in a mess. That really was quite something. That was stuck in there, could not get it out. And it was 
it was quite something. Uh, it would have been YouTube gold. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for coming back. I appreciate it. I know I've went over this primer a couple times, but I can only do what, what we're doing. I can only tell you what we're doing. And uh, if you like it, put a like in. If you don't like, you know what to do. But uh, get your friends to subscribe. Uh, come back. We'll be here tomorrow. We'll be at Syracuse Nationals July 14th and 15th. And every once in a while, give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it. Thanks for coming back.